In Elixir, there is a big chance the term fault tolerance is mentioned when discussing the merits of this language. It's rare for a language to have process monitoring and responsibility hierarchy built right into the core. This presentation is going to introduce the concepts and syntax of supervisors, go over available supervision strategies and restart options, and introduce a few methods and examples. GenServer ideas are at the heart of the supervisor module. If you are new to GenServer, please check out previous videos in this series that introduce GenServer concepts like callbacks and concurrency. This is a basic example of a supervisor. You can see that structurally it resembles the GenServer quite a bit. Here we have a module that is going to use Elixir supervisor behavior. You can see that it has a start link method that starts a supervisor process and it has an init callback method that runs when you call start link. When you run it and it starts successfully, it returns OK and process ID just like the gen server. Inside the init method, however, things are quite a bit different. At the end of the initialization, we call the supervise method, to which we pass the children and a strategy argument. In the supervisor context, children refer to the processes directly under its supervision, and you are required to declare at least one child process. In this example, the list of children contains just one element, which is this gen server. A supervisor is also able to monitor other supervisors, which will look after its children. But whoever this particular supervisor is directly responsible for will be defined inside of this list. The other required argument for the supervise method is the strategy. The strategy defines what happens when one of the children is terminated we're going to go over each strategy in detail. For now, let's go back to the list of children. The goal of every child element is to define a template for the monitored process. In this example, we only define one worker. The worker method takes a module and a list of elements to pass to this module as arguments when it starts up. By default, the method that will be called to start this worker process is start link and this list contains the arguments that will be passed to it. This could be a bit confusing. We are not going to pass an empty list as an argument. We are not going to pass any arguments at all in this case. You see that the start link method on the basic gen server does not expect to take any arguments. A more elixir way to say this would be that the empty list here would be calling the basic module start link method with zero arity. If this would contain one element, that element is what would be passed to the start link method here. Two elements inside of this list would mean two arguments, and so on. You could also define a keyword list here, but it would have to be nested inside of this list, otherwise each pair would be treated as a separate argument tuple. Now let's talk about the different supervision strategies. We have one for one, that means when any of the supervised processes terminates, it will be restarted. One for all, meaning if any one of the children terminates, all processes will be restarted. Rest for one, which is similar to one for all, but instead of all processes being restarted, only ones defined below the process that terminates are restarted. We're going to go over each one of these in more detail. One other supervision strategy is simple one for one. This one is the most special because it's meant for managing multiple child processes of the same type which will be started and stopped dynamically. Let's modify the basic supervisor module by adding a few more children processes. Each child is going to be a different gen server module, but each one won't be doing anything besides output the module name when it starts up. Having multiple children processes should help visualize the differences between the supervision strategies. Let's go over a few helpful methods. First, we are going to run basic supervisor start link. You should see output of all four monitored processes at this point. It's important to note that for all strategies except simple one for one, supervisor start link starts all children processes as well. When they all started successfully, you will see OK and the supervisor process ID. 
Elixir process module has an alive method to check if a process is running. It just returns a boolean. This method can be used on any Elixir process. Another method we're going to use is which children. Notice that this method is called on Elixir's supervisor module and not on basic supervisor module that we defined. This method returns a list of tuples containing information about each supervised process. Knowing that there will only be four elements here, we can grab all four at the same time. Notice that even though the children processes started in the order they were defined, basic one process is the last element in this list. Since we are only interested in its process ID, and we know that each one of these tuples has four elements, we can pattern match this tuple and grab basic one process ID. Just to confirm it, you can see that this variable does contain the PID for this process. To demonstrate the supervisor actions, we're going to use genserver stop method to stop the process and watch what happens. Now let's apply these methods on each one of the strategies. Beginning with one for one strategy, we start a supervisor process, run which children method to capture all the worker processes, and select the first worker PID. That's actually the last element in the list. And now, Let's stop this worker by calling genserver stop. When you run this, you should see basic1 is starting printed on the screen, which means that worker process was restarted. So, we stopped a worker process manually and the supervisor found out about it and restarted it. If we check to see if one PID is still alive, it's not, since that's the process that was stopped. When we grab the active children of the supervisor again, we can see that in that list, every process ID stayed the same except for the basic one process. So, when one of the monitored processes terminates, only that process is restarted. This strategy is used when a supervisor only monitors one process or when all monitored processes don't rely on each other in any way. Let's repeat these actions for a one for all strategy. We start the supervisor, grab the children, which gives us a list again, and just like before, grab the PID of the basic one worker. When you stop it, all worker processes will be stopped and you will see starting messages for all of them, meaning they were all restarted. Once again, checking if one PID is alive is false, and when you select the children, you will see that all process IDs are now different. REST for one will be very similar. We start the supervisor, grab the children, and get a list. This time though, we're going to grab the PID of the basic two process. When you stop it, all processes defined below it will be stopped. When they get restarted, you will see the starting messages for processes two, three, and four. Basic one process was left alone because it was defined above the process that was stopped. When you grab the children again, you will see that all process IDs except for basic one are now different. Let's recap the strategies we learned so far. One for one strategy restarts the process and just the process that was stopped. One for all strategy restarts all the processes for anyone that goes down. Rest for one strategy restarts the process that went down and all the ones defined below it. Before moving on to talk about simple one-for-one -one strategy, I want to mention an option that could be passed to the worker method. The worker method could take an optional restart argument that would define the restart conditions for that process. Permanent is the default for one-for-one, one-for-all, and rest-for-one, the ones we've covered so far. It means that no matter how the process got terminated, whether it crashed or was simply shut down, it will be restarted. Transient is the default for simple one-for-one. -one. It means that the process will only be restarted if it crashed. If we would have set that option for any one of our workers here, they would not be restarted because we've been shutting them down nicely. The third restart option is temporary. In this case, the process would not be restarted under any circumstances. 
if it crashes or gets simply shut down, the supervisor will not restart it. I also want to mention that the restart argument takes precedence over the strategy. So, even if the strategy is one for all, the process would only be restarted if it's compatible with its restart setting. So now let's talk about the simple one-for-one -one strategy. Simple one-for-one -one only allows one worker to be defined. When you start it and run which children, you'll get an empty list. Unlike the other strategies, a worker will not be started when you start a supervisor. In order to start a worker process, you'll need to call supervisor start child method with the supervisor ID. When you run it, you'll see basic one is starting, printed out and OK and the worker process ID will be returned. You are not limited to just one child process, however. Simple one for one strategy is meant for monitoring multiple processes of the same kind. So you could start multiple basic one workers by running supervisor start child again. And again, you'll see basic one is starting, printed out and the new process ID is the response value. Note that we are not specifying anything about the worker process when running start child method. Because we define the strategy as simple one for one, the supervisor knows that we want to start another worker of that same type. Now when you run supervisor which children, you'll get a list containing the process IDs of the workers we just started. Knowing there are only two, we could grab them and get an ID out of one of them. So. Now, if you want to shut down one of the workers, you would run supervisor terminate child. Notice that this is a supervisor method and not a gen server method. Running which children again, you'll see that we only have one process remaining. Simple one for one strategy is great when you need a fluctuating number of workers. You may need more or less due to some kind of demand or simply want to start a unique session for a given user or game or something like that. We covered a variety of ways a supervisor could monitor processes. The real power of supervision, however, comes from building layers of hierarchy, where the supervisor could watch not just worker processes, but other supervisors as well, creating a robust and a fault-tolerant system. In the real application, workers need to be able to communicate with each other. The way that were defined in our examples, that would be pretty impractical. In order to find the process ID for every worker, we need to look up its supervisor, get the children, and parse that list. That could get pretty complicated in a sizable hierarchy. Luckily, Elixir provides a way to register processes so that its ID would be associated with a module name, an atom, or even a custom string, which would be great for dynamic workers. But let's discuss that at another time. At this point, you know the main building blocks of Elixir OTP applications. The goal of this tutorial was to make sure that the structure and the syntax of supervisors make sense and you are able to figure out how they get wired up. I hope you continue exploring Elixir and are excited about the tools this language has to offer. Thank you for watching.